Chapter 19 The Ghosts of the Red Coats The game at this point was irreparably lost. In fact, it threatened to become even more dangerous for the pirate and his friend. It was not to be assumed that the guard, given the darkness and the distance, had caught a distinct glimpse of the pirate who had already dived behind a bush, but he could have left his post to look for him or gone off to summon a few other soldiers. Seneca knew he had himself in danger, but instead of fleeing, he lay silently behind that refuge of leaves. The guard repeated his challenge, but got no response. He took a couple of steps forward and checked to see if anyone was hiding in the bushes. Thinking he had been mistaken, he headed back towards the villa and returned to his post in front of the entrance. Fighting the urge to attack, Sandokan began to slowly back away, taking a thousand precautions, moving from one tree to the next, crawling behind bushes, without ever taking his eyes off the soldier, who continued to keep his rifle leveled, ready to fire. When he arrived among the flower beds, he quickened his pace and rushed into the hothouse where the Portuguese anxiously awaited him. How do things look? he asked. I was starting to worry. Not good, replied the tiger, stifling his anger. The villa is guarded and the garden is teeming with soldiers. We won't be able to attempt an escape tonight. Great. I'll take advantage of that by taking a nap. It's unlikely they'll come back here to bother us. Who can guarantee that? Are you trying to make me nervous, Sandokan? Another platoon could easily come in here and make a new search. Our little adventure appears to be going badly, little brother. If only your sweetheart could get us out of this tragic situation. Poor Mariana. Who knows how she may be guarded? How she must be suffering, not knowing what's happening to us. I'd give anything to let her know we're still alive. No need to worry, brother. Whatever her situation, she's in better straits than we are. I think we should take advantage of this lull and get some rest. A little sleep would do us both good. Yes, but it'd be best to sleep with one eye open. I wish I could sleep with both eyes open. Come now, let's stretch out behind these vases and try to get a bit of rest. Though not completely at ease, Sandokan and Yanez lay down among the Chinese roses, hoping for a few hours' sleep. But despite their efforts, they could not close an eye. The fear of Lord James's soldiers suddenly reappearing keep them awake. They got up several times to calm their ever-increasing nervousness, then left the hothouse to see if the enemy was still nearby. When dawn broke, the British were still searching the grounds. Their ranks had been reinforced and there were soldiers everywhere, looking among the mangroves, bamboo groves, bushes and flower beds. They appeared certain of finding the two cunning pirates who had the impudence to scale the wall. Assured that the enemy was still far off, Yanez and Sandokan quickly raided a bao kandanska tree laden with succulent orange fruit the size of an infant's head. Then, after carefully erasing the soot marks they had left on the floor, they climbed back into the furnace once again. Though the hothouse had been searched, the British could quite easily return to look for the pirates with the light of day. Having devoured their meagre breakfast, Sandokan and Yanez took out a couple of cigarettes and sat down among the ashes, planning to wait for nightfall before they attempted their escape. They had been hiding in there for several hours when Yanez thought he heard several footsteps advancing towards the hothouse. The pirates immediately stood up and drew their krises. "'Someone's coming,' whispered the Portuguese. "'Are you sure?' asked Sandokan. "'Yes, someone's walking down the path. If I was certain he were alone, I'd take him prisoner. You're mad, Sandokan. We'd make him tell us where the soldiers are and what our best escape route would be. I'm sure he'd trick us. He wouldn't dare, Yanez. Do you think we should check? Let's not take any needless risks, Sandokan. We've got to try something, my friend. Let me go out and take a look. Shouldn't we both go? If I need your help, I'll yell out. Do you hear anything? No. Go ahead, Yanez. I'll be here ready to pounce. Yanez listened for a few minutes, walked up to the opposite end of the hothouse, went outside and carefully scanned the banana groves. From behind the bushes he spotted several soldiers lazily searching the flower beds. It appeared the others had left the garden, having given up hope of finding the pirates near the villa. 
Let's hope, said Yanis, that if they don't find us today, they'll think we've escaped. If all goes well, we'll be in the forest shortly after nightfall. He was about to turn back when he glanced at the villa and spotted a soldier heading up the path to the house. Has he seen me? he wondered anxiously. He dove in among the banana trees and quickly raced back to Sandokan. One look at Yanis and the pirate knew something terrible had happened. Are you being followed? he asked. I'm afraid I may have been spotted, replied Yanis. There's a soldier heading towards our hiding place. Just one? Yes, just one. That's the man I need. What do you mean? How close are the others? They're near the wall. Then we'll capture him. What? Yanis asked nervously. We'll capture the soldier and take him prisoner. You're going to get us killed, Sandokan. Yanez wanted to protest, but Sanokan had already raced out of the hothouse. For better or worse, he had followed his friend, if for no other reason than to prevent him from doing something rash. The soldier Yanez had spotted was less than two hundred paces away. He was a thin, pale young man with red hair, more than likely a new recruit. He advanced on chalantly, rifle shouldered, whistling a tune. He must not have seen Yanez, for if he had, he would have undoubtedly carried his weapon differently and would not have advanced towards the hothouse without taking precautions or summoning one of his colleagues for backup. It'll be easy, said Sanokan, leaning towards Yanez. As soon as he passes, we'll jump him from behind. Pull out your handkerchief and be ready to gag him. Fine, replied Yanez. But I still think we're taking a great risk. He won't put up much of a fight. What if he yells for help? He won't have the time. There he is! The soldier had walked past the grove without noticing anything suspicious. Moving in perfect unison, with one quick motion, Sandokan and Yanez jumped him from behind. While the tiger grabbed him by the neck, the Portuguese swiftly gagged him. But though the attack had been lightning fast, the young man still had the time to let out a sharp cry. Hurry, Yanez, said Sandokan. The Portuguese picked up the soldier and quickly carried him into the furnace. Sandokan joined them. A few minutes later, a slight look of worry on his face. He had been unable to retrieve the soldier's rifle, having spotted two men heading down the path. "'We're in trouble, Yanez,' he said, hurrying into the furnace. "'They know we've kidnapped the soldier?' asked Yanez, turning pale. "'They must have heard the cry. "'Then we're done for!' "'Not yet, but if they spot his rifle on the ground, they'll undoubtedly come for lo to look for us here. "'Let's not waste time, then, little brother. Let's get out of here. We'll run for the wall.' They'll shoot us before we run fifty paces. We'll hide in the furnace and see what happens. Besides, we're armed and ready for anything. I hear them coming. Don't be afraid, Yanez. The Portuguese had not been mistaken. A few soldiers had reached the vicinity of the hothouse and began to discuss the young man's mysterious disappearance. Someone must have taken him by surprise. Why else would he leave his rifle here? asked the soldier. It's hard to believe that pirates are still here and were brave enough to attempt such a thing, said another. Do you think Barry is playing a joke, sir? This is no time for jokes. Yet, I can't believe anything has happened to him. He must have been captured by two, the two pirates, said a voice with a thick Scottish accent. No one actually saw those two men jump over the wall. Could they be hiding? We've searched the entire garden without finding a trace of them. They couldn't have just vanished. They're not spirits. Hey, Barry! thundered a voice. Knock off the jokes, you idiot, or I'll give you a taste of the lash. Naturally, no one replied. The young man wanted to, but, being gagged and threatened by a pair of Chris's, he wisely decided against it. For the soldiers, the silence immediately confirmed their suspicions. Something bad had happened to their friend. What should we do? asked the Scotsman. Look for him, replied another. We've already searched the groves. Let's search the hothouse, said a third. At the sound of those words, the two pirates grew uneasy. What are we going to do? asked Yanez. First we'll kill the prisoner, said Sandakan resolutely. The blood would give us away. Besides, this young man is too scared to pose any kind of threat. Fine, we'll spare him. Now stand beside the hatch. Smash in the skull of the first soldier that pokes his head in. And you? I'm preparing a surprise for those redcoats. Yanez took his rifle, loaded it, and lay down amongst the ashes. Sanokan bent down towards the prisoner and said, If you make even the slightest sound, I'll stick my knife in your throat. 
If you want to live, don't move. He turned away from the frightened young man and started to tap lightly on the furnace's sides. It's going to be a splendid surprise, he said. Wait for my signal. In the meantime, the soldiers had entered the hothouse and began to move the vases about, angrily cursing their colleague and the tiger of Malaysia. Not finding anything, they fixed their eyes on the furnace. "'By the saints!' exclaimed the Scotsman. "'Could Barry have been hit, killed and hidden in there?' "'Let's check,' said another. "'Take care, my friends,' said a third. "'That furnace is large enough to hide more than one man.' Sandokan leaned against a wall. "'Yanez,' he said, "'on my mark. I'm ready.' Sandokan heard the hatch open, moved back a little, then hurled himself at the wall. Deafening screech filled the air as the side gave way beneath that powerful blow. The tiger! yelled the soldier, scattering in all directions. Sandokan had suddenly appeared among the debris, rifle drawn, crisp bared be between his teeth. He fired upon the first soldier before him, attacked the others, brought down another two, then ran out of the hothouse with Yanez following closely behind him. 